the 9mm Luger versus the 40 Smith & Wesson. Dave and I are going to be talking two of the most popular self-defense cartridges on the market right now. Hello friends and lovers, this is Dave Trillo and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to talk about the two most popular centerfire handgun cartridges in the United States, and those yep. are of course the 9mm and the 40 s and We're going to be the first people ever to compare these two cartridges <laughs> to each other, and to be sure, if you picked one over the other, uh, you might be extremely wrong and incapable of defending yourself and about as vulnerable as a, as a damp kitten in a, in a bear enclosure. Uh, but no matter which of these two cartridges you like the best, make sure you click on that link down in the description. Get that free $20 off coupon uh, on your next ammunition purchase from ammo.com. If you want to get loaded up on 9mm or 40 Smith & Wesson, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with either, but I do have my personal biases. But yeah, these are very interesting cartridges because uh, the 40 was really kind of developed in response to the 1986 Miami shootout where they really kind of determined that it was the ineffectiveness of the uh, the FBI's 9mm and 38 special uh, you know, ammunition at the time. Yeah, the FBI pretty much determined never to be outgunned again on that fateful yep. day in Florida. That is for sure. And they went hardcore when they went with that. They went from one end of the spectrum to the next. And uh, this is where the 10 millimeter came from, of course. And the 40 Smith & Wesson is no slouch. It's nothing to get in the way of. And it's a very potent self-defense cartridge. Yeah. I mean, compared to the 9 millimeter, you're already talking about a wider bullet, the 40 caliber versus the 0.355 inch bullet. Yep. So you're talking about a wider wound channel diameter, even without terminal expansion taken into account. And that's a big thing because back in the 80s, hollow points were not as good as they are today. They were kind of in their infancy, in my opinion, and they were having some unreliable expansion. And I think that's the main reason why they made this switch from the 9 to the 40 is they wanted something that was going to hit harder. They wanted something a little more powerful, had a little more kinetic energy, and the 40 is what they came up with. How much more kinetic energy are we talking about side by side? Let's look here because I, I knew you were going to ask this, so I pulled up the ballistic charts. Uh, for your average, I would say 124 grain, uh, you know, hollow point, you're probably looking at somewhere in the realm of about 350 to 375 foot pounds for the 9 millimeter. Uh, for your uh, 40 Smith and Wesson, uh, the 165 uh, jacketed hollow point is incredibly popular. You typically find these in 165 and 185, or no, is it 185? It's 180. 180. Yeah, 165 and 180. Everybody says you should be shooting 165. That's up for debate. But uh, that one, you're looking at about, uh, looks to be about 440. So, you know, a pretty, you know, sizable increase over the 9mm. Uh, nothing to shake a stick at, to say the least. Yeah, well, the 40 SW indisputably more powerful. But to be sure, the minimum recommended kinetic energy on impact for self defense usually falls between 220 and 300 foot pounds. So neither one of these rounds actually could be described as uh, impotent for as far as its uh, intended purpose is concerned. Now, I'll say, you know, especially for barrier penetration, the 40 is going to do a lot better than the 9. Uh, I think that's pretty well known. I've seen studies. If, if you average the number of shots it takes to incapacitate a threat with the 9 versus the 40, the 40 doesn't require that significantly fewer shots on average. And I think that's really why a lot of police departments and even the feds, from what I understand, are moving back to the 9mm. So they switched from the 9mm to the 40 in the 80s, and then now, over the past like five, six years, we're switching back to the 9. And I think that's because it's one, it's easier to handle, and two, it's got higher magazine capacity. It's not such a compromise because yeah. Bullet manufacturing technology has progressed to a point where 9mm JHP is, is just so effective at oh, delivering yeah. reliable terminal expansion that that's a, that's a factor they can count on more and rely a little bit less on the brute force of a 40 cal bullet. 
I got to agree with you on that. I think if there's one jacketed hollow point out there that has been engineered to, you know, the moon and back, it's got to be the nine millimeter. And, you know, you should consider your hollow point before you commit to a self-defense round because yeah. police grade hollow points are designed for that penetration through sheet metal and drywall, yep. uh, you know, auto glass, the, the kinds of barriers that a cop might have to penetrate in order to neutralize the threat. And that's a really good point. Uh, you know, talking about over penetration and things like that is it's a very critical thing in a self defense situation. The last thing you want to do is, you know, punch through the bad guy and then go into the next room and hit your family or an innocent bystander, whatever that may be. And that's definitely something you should look into. But let's talk a little bit more about this. And I think probably the hottest issue when it comes to nine versus 40 is recoil. This is one that I think honestly is the main reason for the switch, uh, especially in law enforcement, as you alluded to earlier, uh, that I think the recoil on the 9mm is a lot easier to handle for a wide range of shooters with different physical abilities, whereas the 40, it's kind of snappy and it's a high pressure round. Yeah, it's heavier bullet is pretty much a main contributor to the 40 S&W's increased recoil energy. I will say myself personally, having fired both a nine millimeter and a 40 side by side, I won't say that the 40 is oppressive or hard to handle or things like that, but it is snappier. You can feel the difference when you're shooting it. And for some shooters that may be uncomfortable. Uh, but let's talk about the other point of contention with the 40 and the nine millimeter, which I think is magazine capacity. Uh, this is something that, you know, you talk to people on the YouTube comments or in any type of forum or things like that, or even at the gun store counter, and magazine capacity comes up quite a bit. Yeah, well, naturally, the uh, 40 S&W cartridge must be wider it is. Than, than the 9mm. Um, just by a tiny bit, 40 S&W bullet is 0. .4005 inches in diameter. Yep. So the cartridge is just a tiny bit wider than that. There's a nine millimeter bullet is about uh, 0.36 inches in diameter. So you're talking about a smaller cartridge. You can just fit more of them into the same amount of space. No, you're absolutely right. The nine millimeter is a smaller cartridge. You're gonna be able to fit more cartridges in the magazine, but it's not a huge difference. But Dave, I gotta tell you recently, we just here near where I live, we had a concerned citizen who was legally caring who stopped a mass shooting in a mall here uh, in Indiana. It took, uh, 10 shots at 40 yards, had eight hits, and took the shooter down. So it typically will take more than one round to do it, and having those extra rounds in the mag can make a difference, especially, like I was talking about earlier, if you're carrying a smaller firearm, uh, you really want to make sure you got enough rounds to stop the threat. Having those extra bullets in the magazine can make the difference. So that is one thing that the 9mm has going for it that, uh, you know, really you can't compare with the, the 40. It's just... it two firearms of the same size, you're going to have less rounds for the 40. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Let's talk about I something like that. That, that we like to talk about a lot here on the podcast, which is ammo availability. And I think it's pretty hard to beat how much 9mm is out on the market right now. Yeah, I think it's the most popular pistol cartridge on earth. Yeah. Uh, the 22 LR notwithstanding, you always got to give that one credit. But True. Um, it's been around for over 100 years. It's, it's an institution, I think. I think most countries' police forces use nine millimeter. Yep, I could be mistaken on that. It's uh, simply never going to go away, and manufacturers are never going to stop producing it in massive quantities. That said, the 40 S and W is not a niche cartridge. No. We're just comparing it to the uh, to the behemoth of the center fire handgun cartridge world. And another thing to think about with that is, you know, if we have a situation like we did back in 2020. You couldn't find nine millimeter, but you could still find 40, uh, which I found interesting. You know, even with the vast amounts of nine millimeter that's out there, uh, you know, it is incredibly popular. So people are going to snatch it up when things aren't looking so good. We'll just put it that way, where there's ammo shortages or things like that. Oftentimes, 40 Smith & Wesson doesn't fly off the shelf as fast as it used to. Uh, so that's definitely a consideration. But I will say 40 Smith & Wesson is generally a little bit more expensive than your typical 9mm round. I do want to touch on one thing here uh, before we close this out. I want to talk about reloading for the 40 because this is something that has come up quite a bit uh, in the reloading community, especially with older model Glock firearms. Now, of course, whether you like Glock or don't, uh, it is one of the more popular law enforcement firearms out there and earlier model Glocks did not have what's referred to as a supported chamber. So what that basically means is when the cartridge was in the barrel and in the chamber, 
part of the back end of the case was exposed. Uh, it wasn't, you know, supported by metal. Now, since the 40 is such a high pressure round, you can sometimes get what's referred to as the Glock bulge, which is a small bulge at the bottom of the case. Typical reloading dies didn't reach down far enough to smooth that out and resize it, and there were some reports of people reloading Glock bulged 40 ammo and then having, you know, a bit of a let's say explosive event happen uh, when they had a, a case failure, basically. Uh, we had a case head separation or things like that. Now, thankfully, I've never experienced that, but it is something you need to be aware of if you're going to purchase once fired brass or if you yourself have an unsupported Glock uh, chamber. It won't affect your accuracy or anything like that. You will need to get some specialized eyes to take care of that. Uh, let me see here. I've got it pulled up. The uh, the Redding GRX kit uh, can do that as well as the Lee Precision Bulge Buster, uh, which is a great name. Uh, but just be careful when you're reloading that 40 Smith & Wesson. It is higher pressure uh, and with faster burning powders, it can cause an issue if you're not careful. So always stick to your reloading uh, manual, what it tells you your min and max are. Don't get crazy, especially with 40, because that pressure curve gets really high really fast. Chris, what do you prefer, 9 or 40? I've said it before on the podcast. I'll say it again. 9 millimeters is still my pick. Uh, I love the 40 for the power that it offers, and I don't want to make it sound like the 40 is a bad round. It is a very good round. It's very good at self-defense, and it will get the job done if you do your part to put rounds on target. I just feel like, for me, the 9 millimeter works better. I like the lower recoil impulse. It allows me to get my follow-up shots on faster, and it also allows me to carry a subcompact and not feel like my hand hurts after I go to the range. Shooting a 40 in a subcompact is, for me, not the most enjoyable experience. Now, for others, your mileage may vary as far as that's concerned, but for me, it's nine millimeter all the way. It's my round of choice. Dave, what's your pick? Personally, I gotta go with the crowd on this one too. I prefer the nine millimeter. There's just something elegant about carrying a, a, a cartridge that was designed by an Austrian in a handgun that was made by an Austrian. It's fair. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank goodness Austrians never did anything bad. Absolutely. No, that never happened at all. But guys, make sure you click that link down below. Get your free $20 off coupon to ammo.com. Regardless of whether you love 9mm or you love 40 or you love something different like a 38 or a 45, we've got it all here at ammo.com. Make sure you get that coupon down below, and we will see you out on the range.